So Dynex coin is blowing up right now, which is great news for us at home miners, since this coin is only mineable on graphics cards, meaning if you have anything from a regular gaming PC to a dedicated GPU mining rig, you can mine this coin. And Dynex has also regularly been the most profitable coin to mine on GPUs for some time now, and out of all the coins that are specifically focused on GPU mining, Dynex is currently the one that pays out the most in total to miners every day. So this will be your ultimate guide to Dynex and Dynex mining. We'll start by going over what Dynex actually is and what makes it special. Then we'll look at what you need in order to mine Dynex and how to set up a wallet. After that, I'm going to show you how to mine it in both Windows and Hive OS. Then I'm going to show you how to overclock properly to get the most out of your GPUs in terms of mining performance, aka hash rate for the lowest amount of power, which is going to both prolong the lifespan of your GPUs and also make sure you are as profitable as possible. Then finally, I'm going to show you how to track your mining earnings and payouts on the mining pool. And speaking of pools, this video is sponsored by the Hero Miners Dynex Mining Pool, and they are actually doing another giveaway for you guys. So stay tuned for more info about that a little bit later in the video. But for now, let's get into some Dynex mining. All right, so what exactly is Dynex? Well, the Dynex project aims to create, in their own words, a global network of decentralized supercomputing. So let me break this down in a simple way because it's actually pretty cool. So generally how crypto mining works is that every time somebody sends coins from one wallet address to another, that transaction information gets put together with data from a bunch of other transactions that are happening at the same time. And all of that data gets written into what is called a block. And all of these blocks of transaction data are written one after another in a long chain, which is where we get the term blockchain. And it is the job of the miners all over the world to write these blocks on the chain, but only one single miner can write each block. And when they do, they get paid what is called the block reward, which, you know, is how we make money as miners. But since everyone is trying to write every single block all the time, there needs to be a system that decides who actually gets to write it. And how that works currently is that for each block there is a set number and the miners all around the world will try to guess what that number is. And whoever guesses the right number first wins and gets to write the block and take home that sweet, sweet block reward. Well, that's a bit of an oversimplification, but basically that is how it works. So the people behind the Dynex saw all of these computers all around the world just guessing numbers trying to write blocks and they thought, hey, what if instead of just randomly guessing numbers, all of those miners were actually doing real compute jobs, that way you'd hit two birds with one stone. And so that is basically what they have built. A coin project where not only do you have the miners securing the network by writing the transaction data, but people can also submit compute jobs, which could be anything from 3D rendering to AI simulations to calculating the strongest structure when making the blueprints for a new skyscraper. And those compute jobs are then sent out to the miners that calculate those jobs as part of the mining process and then send the results back to whoever submitted the job. And from the miners perspective, this process is completely seamless and you won't even notice it. The only thing you'll notice is that when you've helped calculate one of those jobs, you get an extra payment since everyone submitting a compute job obviously has to pay for it. And that payment is made in Dynex coin to the miners that helped calculate the job. Now, these two systems are called proof of work and proof of useful work, where proof of work is the number guessing when trying to write the block and proof of useful work is the computing you do when you're trying to solve the job sent out to you on the network. And Dynex uses both those systems at the same time because there still needs to be a little bit of that number guessing just to help secure the network and write the blocks on the chain. But the way they've done it is that's only about 5% of the work your GPU does and the remaining 95% is dedicated to proof of useful work calculations, right? Just keep in mind that because of this, depending on what type of proof of useful work job you're being sent, your hash rate might fluctuate a bit here and there. This is normal and just kind of how it works when mining Dynex. 
So what do we need to mine Dynex? Well, first of all, we need a computer that has one or several graphics cards. So anything from a gaming PC to a full GPU mining rig. On top of that, we also need a Dynex wallet, a mining pool and a mining software. Now, all of that is pretty standard for any GPU mineable coin. But what we also need for Dynex is what's called a Malab endpoint. Practically speaking, this works the same as a mining pool, but for the proof of useful work part of the mining. All right, so starting with the wallet, Dynex has a dedicated page on their website listing available wallets and how to set them up. Just click on get and then scroll down to the wallet section of the website. The easiest one to set up here is gonna be the one they call the mobile web wallet, but you don't need to be on your phone to set it up or use it. So I don't really know why they call it that. It's just like any regular web wallet in my opinion. Anyway, <laughs> just click on open the wallet and then on create your wallet now and follow the instructions. At the end of the setup, just click on receive DNX and then from there you can copy your DNX wallet address. So we got our DNX wallet address and after this we need our mining pool and malop endpoint. Now for those of you who might be new, a mining pool is basically just a place where you get together with a bunch of other miners for the coin and you split the mining rewards equally based on the hash rate each person has. The reason for doing this is to take the luck factor out of mining so that everyone gets paid fairly. Of course, we are going to be using the Hero Miners pool for this and they also provide us with the Malob endpoint we need, so setup is super easy. All we have to do is come to dynex.herominers.com, click on start at the top and then copy the mining server address that is closest to you and also the port which we can see here is just 1120 and then finally the corresponding Malob endpoint from the list here. Just copy those three things and with that we now have the four bits of info we need to set up our mining. Our wallet address, our mining pool server address, port number and Malab endpoint. Now let me quickly tell you about the giveaway that Hero Miners are doing and then we'll get into how to start mining Dynex. So starting now and running until the 31st of August, Hero Miners is running a giveaway of $1,000 worth of Dynex coin to people mining Dynex on their pool. In total, there are six prizes to be won. Five people will win $100 worth of Dynex coin and one lucky winner will take home $500 worth of DNX. The way the giveaway works is that between now and until the end of August, at five random times, Hero Miners will write down all the wallet addresses that are currently mining Dynex on their pool at that time, or as they call it, take a snapshot of all the current miners on the pool. And all the addresses in that snapshot get one entry each to possibly win in the giveaway. And since they are doing five different snapshots at five random times throughout this period, you can get up to five entries into the giveaway, which of course gives you five times more chance to win. So if you get on all five snapshots, you of course have five times the likelihood of winning. Now to get all those five entries, you need to make sure you are mining Dynex to Hero Miners for this whole period so that you don't miss any of the snapshots. And as a matter of fact, the winners are actually going to be randomly selected by me. So the way that's gonna work is they're going to send me a long list of all the addresses from all five snapshots. And then I'm going to use a random number generator to pick six winners on camera in an upcoming video. Now, of course, this giveaway isn't the only reason to use the Hero Miners pool. They are also doing 0% pool fees for all their Dynex miners for this whole giveaway period. And there are many other reasons why I usually like recommending Hero Miners to you guys as well. Like the fact that they have server addresses all around the world to make sure you have a strong and fast connection to the pool no matter where you're mining from. And the fact that they make it so easy to track your mining stats and payouts. So I'll put the link to Hero Miners Dynex pool down in the video description. And now let's set up our Dynex mining. So starting on Windows, depending on if you have AMD or Nvidia GPUs, you're going to have to download one of two different mining software. For AMD GPUs, you're going to download SRB Miner and for Nvidia GPUs, 1.0 Miner. I have Nvidia GPUs in my PC, so I'm going to go with 1.0 Miner here. First, just come back to the start page on the Hero Miners website, scroll down and here you can select either SRB Miner or 1.0 Miner. It then gives you the link to download the mining software from their official GitHub pages. 
Just make sure you set an exclusion in Windows Defender and any potential antivirus software you have for the folder you are downloading the mining software to. This is because mining software is often falsely flagged as malware in Windows. So you need to do this in order for it to you know, not get instantly deleted. But of course, you are doing that at your own risk. After you've downloaded the zip file for Windows, just unzip it and then you can easily follow the instructions back here on the Hero Miners page on how to get it set up. As we can see here it says to just open notepad, paste in the example setup that they have here, then you just need to paste in your own Dynex wallet address where it says your Dynex wallet address, and then just check that the pool server address and malloc endpoints are the ones that are the closest to you from you know, the list up a bit higher on the page. Then just save that as dynex-herominers.bat inside of the folder of your unzipped 10miner software. Right click on it and hit run as admin. And you are now good to go. As for HiveOS, go to your farm, hit flight sheets and start by picking DNX as your coin. Then click on add wallet if you haven't already and just fill in your Dynex wallet address and save. Then on the pool, we are going to click configure in miner. That's because the hero miners mining pool for Dynex is so new that HiveOS haven't added it to their list of presets yet. But if you're watching this video in the future, you can probably just select hero miners uh, right from the list that pops up and then just check the server and malloc endpoint that is closest to you. All right, so then moving on to the miner field here, either select SRB miner if you have AMD GPUs or 1.0 miner if you have Nvidia GPUs. I have Nvidia GPUs, so I'm going with 1.0 miner. We're then gonna click on setup miner config and on the wallet template, we are going to hover over the little I and click on the first wall thing here, then add a period, then hover over the I again and click on the whole worker name thing. Then under pool URL, we're going to paste the pool server address, then add a colon and then the port number from the hero miners website. Under pass, you can just put a lowercase x. And finally, under extra config arguments, we're going to add the malloc endpoint exactly the way it was written on the Hero Miners website. Then hit apply changes, create flight sheet, and then you can just apply this flight sheet to start mining Dynex on any of your workers. And that's it. Now, let me teach you how to properly overclock and tweak your GPUs to get the most performance out of your mining rig. So if you have AMD GPUs, Overclocking is a bit more complicated than I can explain in this video. So I actually have two videos all about how to overclock AMD GPUs for mining. One on how to do it in Windows and one on how to do it in HiveOS. So what I'll do is I'll link both of those videos down in the video description so that you can check them out. But as for Nvidia GPUs, we're actually going to do the overclocking directly inside of 1.0 miner using these three arguments, core clock, core offset and memory clock and you add them just as they're written here. In Windows, you paste them at the end of the bat file we made, just after the malloc endpoint argument, all as one long line. And in HiveOS, you add it in the setup minor config under the extra config arguments on one line each after the malloc endpoint line. Now, if you just want easy, quick settings that will you know, be decent, you can just come to this website here called hashrate.no, find your GPU, click on Dynex, and it will give you the three values for core offset, core clock, and memory clock for your GPU that you can then add inside of your 1.0 minor config. And those settings will, you know, they'll be fine. But if you want to find the, you know, most optimal and perfect settings for your specific rig, then stick around because I'm about to teach you the whole process of how to figure those out. So we'll start with the easiest setting first, which is the memory clock one, because for pretty much all, at least somewhat modern NVIDIA GPUs, the best value here is just going to be uh, straight up 5001. So put that in for your memory clock and let's move on. Next up is the core clock and core offset. This is where you're going to do a lot of individual testing if you want to find the absolute best settings for your rig. Basically, you need to try different core clocks and then slowly increase the core offset to see which core clock and core offset combination gives you the best results in terms of mining efficiency. Efficiency, of course, meaning how much hash rate you're getting per watt of electricity. And I suggest starting on a core clock of perhaps 1320 and a core offset of zero, save your bat file or flight sheet, run the miner and take note of the stated efficiency in the mining software after you've let it run for about five minutes to stabilize. Then close the miner, 
open your bat file or flight sheet again and increase the core offset by 30 save run the miner again and again take note of the efficiency after about five minutes then repeat this step until either you stop seeing an increase in efficiency you start seeing a decrease in efficiency or the miner crashes then note down what the best efficiency you were able to achieve on that core clock was and with what core offset for that core clock and then either increase or decrease your core clock by 15 and start again and repeat this whole process of trying different core offsets for all different core clocks up and down until you feel confident that you've found the most efficient setting. And when you're done, you'll be left with a spreadsheet that looks something like this. So this is me following this exact process for my RTX 3070, which is the one you can see over here, which I do all my testing on. So feel free to copy my numbers here, by the way, but they might not be, you know, super optimal for your specific 3070, yes, even individual GPUs can differ quite a bit. But just comparing my results with what's on hashrate.no for the 3070, I'm able to get almost 50% more hash rate per watt of power used, which is quite a big improvement, to be honest, and yeah, why I always try to encourage you guys to do all of your own overclocking. Now that we've got our mining software set up and our overclocks dialed in, it's time to check on our mining progress. And to do so, we just come to the Hero Miners Dynex Pool website, scroll down to the Your Stats and Payment History section, paste our wallet address and hit Look Up. We can then see our hash rate history, how much we've been paid so far and how much is pending payment. We can see our estimated daily earnings, the stats for all of our mining rigs and a whole bunch more. You can also click on the little cogwheel at the top right corner to change the minimum payout amount. It might be a good idea to increase this at least a little bit, otherwise you might get several payouts every single day which could become a lot of work during tax season to do all of that bookkeeping. Now, quickly before we wrap up, there are a few things you need to know. If you encounter some issues when you're mining, or that mining doesn't really work at all, it might be related to how the actual Malab service works. This has nothing to do with the pool, and usually some ways of fixing it is to make and use a different wallet address, or make sure that the clock of your system is correct, or by just trying a different Malab endpoint address from the list on the Hero Miners website. It is also worth noting that estimated earnings in mining calculators might not be fully accurate at this point, as there are some challenges with how the effort calculations work. Now please subscribe for more mining videos, and if you want to support the channel so that I can keep making more mining videos like this one, you can click the join button below to get access to some bonus content, or you could buy one of the shirts in my merch store, link to that will be down in the video description. And those things both really do make a difference, so thank you. There are also some videos over there on your right that you can watch next, so yeah, I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.